One of the biggest challenges in selling African-American fantasy fiction to African-Americans is the issue of cognitive distortion. When it comes down to the African-American imagination, many African-Americans still see the world through a white lens. And because they see the world through a white lens, this is why they cannot imagine a fantasy world created by African-Americans for African-Americans. Now, an example of this cognitive distortion can easily be seen in the doll test, because every time people would put a white doll and a black doll in front of a child, the African-American child would always choose the white doll. And when they chose that white doll, they were basically showing how they imagined the world, that they imagined the world as white. And as an author, I run into this quite a bit when I'm trying to promote and sell books, even within my own family. I mean, I was at the table presenting my 2016 fantasy titles um, to my family, and they could not really understand what I was presenting to them. I mean, I got questions about things like, with the, for example, with the Bride of Dracula book that I put out, um, saying things like, how can Dracula hypnotize an Egyptian god? Now, I've read Marvel comics where characters like Thor and Superman ran into the same situations that I put in the Bride of Dracula book, but they couldn't fathom the idea because it came from an African-American perspective. Now, the same white person could present the same idea, and the African-American would pretty much digest and accept that idea as perfectly fine. But if the African-American author, like myself, presents the same fantasy concepts with African-American characters in them, you run into resistance, you run into questions, and they sit there and they'll tell you that this this does not make any sense. Well, it's fantasy. It's not supposed to make any sense. It's supposed to be an imaginary world, and it's supposed to show um, what kind of vision that you have, that you're trying to um, make a commentary about things. Because with fantasy, what you're trying to do is make a social commentary about the world going on around you. But from what I'm seeing is, in the last seven, eight years, I've been trying to sell African-American fantasy fiction is that one of the great big hurdles that a creator like myself runs into is dealing with cognitive distortion in the African-American community because most African-Americans, they still sadly see the world through that white lens. And because they see that world through that white lens, they wind up with a limited perspective on things because the reason why we don't see things like African-American superheroes or African-American fantasy shows or sci-fi shows on the regular is because a lot of African-Americans still don't imagine themselves in these kind of places. They imagine themselves as being a small part in a white person's world instead of creating a world of their own. And that is one of the great big challenges in trying to get people to change their perception of the world so that they can start to see themselves as part of creating their own worlds and their own universes. And I personally believe that it also affects how people even envision their own neighborhoods because I believe the main reason why many African American neighborhoods are ghettos is because many people still see their lives through the white lens and the way these white liberals present the world of the African American to him, that they show him that this is some sort of run-down, dirty neighborhood as compared to a white neighborhood. Now, I've been doing research for another novel I've been working on, which is called Spellbound. Um, that's the prequel to Spinsterella, the African-American goth story I'm working on. And in this story, uh, the Matilda character, we see her on her journey as she starts into the goth subculture. And during in the first 50 or 60 pages, um, I'm trying to show how this cognitive distortion affects the people around her and how she starts to really take a look at the perceptions that people have of themselves and how they see their communities and how that is reflected in them. And that's why the title is partially called Spellbound because it's part of the spell that 
binds the minds of many African Americans. And it's also a reference to the Susie and the Banshee song, Spellbound, which also talks about, you know, children and how they are entranced by what's going around them. So I look at that cognitive distortion in when it comes down to African Americans, and it really makes me think it really makes me think of trying to find new ways to try to sell African-American fantasy to African-Americans because we really desperately need more people opening up their imaginations and seeing a world where we see ourselves in it and not allowing other people to tell us what place we have in it. Because as long as we let people of other races tell us what place we have in their world, we're not going to have a significant place in that world because that's why we get the Finns and Star Wars who are garbage men and, you know, the way Falcon and War Machine were treated in Avengers Age of Ultron as side characters because that's the way most white people in fantasy see us. Uh, the way I see us is as upfront as the leaders and the heads and that's why I make characters like John Haynes from The Temptation of John Haynes and The Man Who Rules the World as the CEO of a company and I create characters like Isis who are goddesses in stories like Your Bride of Dracula because I see the world with black people in it as being upfront, black people being prominent, black people being able to tell their own stories from their own perspective about their own experiences and I want to see people to see that you know there is more than one type of experience in black culture and that black culture is more than just your ghetto and it's more than just um, one type of story and one type of experience um, and I believe African American fantasy opens up the imaginations of kids so they can see a larger world a larger world of characters a larger world of people and start to see a place for themselves in it because when you read African American fantasy like Your Bride of Dracula and you give it to your kids at an early age, they start opening up their imagination and they start seeing a place for themselves in the world of fantasy. And that makes them see a larger place for themselves in the real world. And they start imagining where they want to go in life early on. And they start imagining who they want to be. And they look at themselves and they say, there is a place for me in the imaginary world. I don't have to take these token and ancillary roles in some white person's fantasy world. I can have a fantasy world all my own with characters that look like me and are if, if, um, reflective of me and culture that is reflective of my own culture. And that's why it's, again, very important for African Americans to start reading African American fantasy fiction, science fiction, and especially those created by African-American authors uh, like myself. You can pick up Isis Bride of Dracula at Amazon.com in paperback and an ebook, and you can pick up Spinsterella um, on Amazon in paperback and in Kindle. I'm working on Spellbound right now, and I'm hoping to have that book out by 2017. This is going to be a book that I'm trying to write for tweens and teens, um, African-American tweens and teens who want to enter the goth subculture and I'm trying to show how Matilda's experience, how she comes into the subculture so that other people understand that African-Americans understand that this goth subculture is open to them and that this is a very, this is, and that there is more than one black experience and that your experience is just as valid as any other experience and that you have to start seeing the world from a black perspective in order to appreciate what's great about being black.